Hey everybody, it's Gina here from Gina Makes It. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am sharing a very easy process on how I created 12 journaling cards from one 12 by 12 piece of scrapbook paper. So I'm starting off with a coffee dyed piece of scrapbook paper. And like I mentioned, it is 12 by 12 and it was just a white piece of plain old scrapbook paper that I had coffee dyed a while ago. So I pulled it out because I knew that I was going to do some collaging or some masterboard creation on one side and I wanted the other side to be coffee dyed so I didn't have to think about covering it when it came time to using the journaling card because that's another area that I sort of struggle with is trying to figure out how I want to cover the back or what I'm going to use to cover the back of the journaling card. So I already wanted it coffee dyed so that part was already taken care of just in case I wanted to do some writing on the back of these little master board cards. So I pulled out tons of scraps. I just kind of sorted through and kind of sourced the scraps that I knew I wanted to use that sort of had like colors. And I am just randomly tearing pieces and gluing them down. This is very similar to my uh, journal video that I created where I created four journals from a piece of masterboard, like a collaged piece of masterboard. It's the exact same idea. So I first started out in the upper left hand corner and I was going to sort of work my way down and over, but then I realized that it was much easier to use the whole 12 by 12 canvas. That way you get a much more balanced master board, at least I feel that I do, versus working in small increments. And this way I can take one piece of scrap and tear it up into different pieces and put them all over the entire 12 by 12 master board. So I am just going to use my glue stick and work on covering up this piece of scrapbook paper. Now that I finished, I'm going to go around the edges and I'm just going to cut off all the stuff that was hanging over just so I have nice clean perimeter uh, for when I go to cut it, which is what I'm going to do now. So since this is 12 by 12 and my journals tend to be on the smaller side, I thought the perfect size for journaling cards would be about three by four. That way they don't take over the journal page too much. They can slide into pockets or tuck spots and I'll get an even amount from this actual master board. So I'm just cutting four columns of three inches each and then I'll do three rows at four inches in height each and then I have my journaling cards and I have to say I really enjoy this process if you have not tried creating master boards I really suggest that you do it's a very satisfying project and it's fun it's something different and it's very artistic because you create different sorts of items by just kind of randomly putting things down and you can't spend too much time worrying about where you're going to glue something down because that's where you can sort of get tripped up in the whole process you just kind of got to go with the flow and just 
put your glue down and put your scrap down, put your glue down and put your scrap down. So I had a little problem here when I cut through, so I'm just repairing that. And now I'm just looking at all of them and I'm going to decorate them. So I had this idea in my head for a couple weeks about adding butterfly wings to like different images. So I have all of these photos in all sorts of digital kits that I have in my Etsy store. And so I just went through all of my kits and I picked out the women who I thought would maybe look good on these journaling cards with some butterfly wings. So the butterfly wings are from my collaged butterfly kit where I just cut out um, a whole bunch of different ones. I was trying to get the most colorful ones because I thought that those would look very nice with the black and white images, photographs, or illustrations from the digital kit. So I'm just going around and I am fussing cutting all of these images out to use on the front. So now that I have some images cut out, I'm going to get to work. So to the right of my work table, I have some tea bags that I just saved and I emptied. And I also have a little bit of stained, tea stained cheesecloth because I knew that I was probably going to want a little bit of texture on some of these. So I am just starting off with this black and white illustration of this lady. And I'm using some very colorful butterfly wings. And I knew that probably the easiest way to do this was to cut the butterflies in half because all the images are different widths. And so I knew that cutting it in half was going to give me a more realistic image. So I just put a little bit of that cheesecloth underneath um, this lady who was sitting down. So I thought it would be nice to add some sort of a sentiment to all of these journaling cards too. And so I pulled together a PDF that's on my website and it's a free download of a few different Victorian era poems. If you're new to my channel or you're not familiar with um, the sort of content that I have on here, it is very heavily Victorian era driven. I have uh, always loved the Victorian era. I was an English literature major in college. I love the literature, the art, the fashion, everything about that whole time period really speaks to me. So it just always tends to be very uh, heavily themed in everything that I do. And it's seems to be speaking even more to me these days. I'm not quite sure why, but it just is. And so I am going with it. So I gathered a whole bunch of different poems. Um, I gathered a Charlotte Bronte poem, a Lewis Carroll, Christina Rossetti, and Gerard Hopkins. And I just used different fonts on this piece of paper, on this PDF. And I thought it would be nice to kind of clip out different phrases from these poems and put them on the journaling cards. It's nice to mix the fonts, to mix the words, to mix the phrases. And so I just thought that it would be like a neat idea to add. So I don't want it to be stark white though. So you can see that I used some of this Distress Oxide and it's just vintage photo. And I just lightly rubbed it on top of that little sentiment that I had cut out. And I don't do it now, but I do it very soon. I decide to add a little bit of water because I know that the Distress Oxides do react with water. And it ends up lightening up the phrase and it adds different sorts of watermarks and different variations of color to the sentiment. 
this sheet of paper, um, if you want to use for your journaling or journaling cards, is definitely um, available for free at GinaMakesIt.com. So go ahead and head over there if you're interested. So I am just basically doing the same thing with this lady that I had done with the other lady. And I am going to proceed on in this fashion with the rest of these journaling cards. This lady is one of my very favorite ladies from all of my kits. And this lady is from the Eyes of Wonder digital kit in my Etsy store. And I started to think that with the colored illustrations or photos that I had that I would use these gold butterfly wings. I had ordered these from Amazon and I just checked and they're still there and I'll link them down below. They're actually stickers that you can put on your wall <laughs> as decoration. And I had ordered them because I thought I might want to put them on the wall, but after they came, I had already changed my mind on what was going on that wall. And so I, instead of returning them, they weren't very expensive and they were very pretty. I thought that I would just keep them and probably use them in different journaling. And I'm really glad I did because they look really nice against these warm hues of some of these illustrations. They provide the perfect contrast. So for the black and white photos or illustrations, I'm using the colored butterfly wings. And then for the colored illustrations, or for some of them, I shouldn't say all of them because there are some that I do use colored wings with because it sort of goes with the picture. Um, I am using these gold ones and I really like the way that it ended up looking, the contrast between the two. The way that I'm positioning these are just based on the photo itself and the journaling card as well. So if there is something of interest on the master board that I want to showcase. I'm sort of putting it off to the right or the left hand side. If the picture is on the bigger side, I'm just kind of putting it where it feels balanced to me. So like for this lady, she is bigger than the journaling card. And so once I put her on, I just go flip it over and I trim the sides so she's nice and flush with the perimeter of it. And you can see for this one, I am using colored butterflies just because the colors sort of go with her. They they blend quite well and I'm just kind of positioning the butterfly wings so that it looks natural, as natural as butterfly wings could look on a human being. <laughs> um, so it doesn't look like I just plopped a piece of butterfly wing behind her and instead I'm actually positioning it where I want it to go. So I am just flipping through my PDF of words and I am cutting out the ones that I think make the most sense or have meaning to me or say something. And I'm also trying to be cognizant of knowing that I'm going to be using these journaling cards and I kind of have a pretty good idea about the types of things that I journal about. And so I kind of want the sentiment to to match whatever it is that I'm journaling about. It doesn't have to be exact or perfect, but um, I'm sort of keeping that in mind as I'm selecting these different types of words. So this lady is so funny. She it was on a swing, but I cut her out, and so it kind of looks like she's flying. I had to cut off a little top of her hair because on the swing she's backwards and so her hair is falling back but here there'd be no reason why her hair would be up in the air like that so I just trimmed off the top of her and I'm gonna try and add these gold butterfly wings so it looks like she's sort of in mid-flight I'm really having a lot of success adding the water to the Distress Oxide and when I went back and looked at them a few hours later, it even lightened up more and it provided different shading to it. So if you have Distress Oxide, it's really fun to kind of experiment with the water on top of it, which I know is sort of the whole idea of Distress Oxide and I am by no means a Distress Oxide expert. In fact, I would consider myself 
a rookie Distress Axe side user, but um, it was fun playing around with this. So now I'm just cutting up one of those tea bags that I had used and emptied, and I thought it would be nice to kind of use it behind this lady. And you can see that I'm kind of moving her off to the left-hand side because I like that magazine. That's an old vintage magazine, the one that says Puritan. It's an ad, and I like the way that that looks peeking through. So I'm kind of adding her just over to the left-hand side.
So I had to cut a few more out because I was running out of people to put on the front. And I thought about using flowers instead, but I just really wanted to stick with this theme. So I had 12 of these that I could use in upcoming projects. And I've mentioned before that I wanted to create more journaling cards because that seems to be a pain point for me. Like I never really have anything to journal on and it kind of slows up my process. So I think in the next few months, there'll be a journaling card tutorial or video every now and again, just so I can build up my stash and maybe give you some ideas on how you can build up your stash of journaling cards too. So I have this lady and she's from my Eyes of Wonder kit and she, her hand is out. And in the original photo, she's looking at like a bird's nest, but I didn't want to include the bird's nest because that's not really what I was doing. But I had these scraps left over from another um, lady that I cut out. It was like a fairy and she was sitting amongst these mushrooms. And this is from my Hint of Spring kit, I believe. And so I thought, I wonder what would happen if I cut out these mushroom scraps would it look like she was sort of standing above these mushroom caps? And it did. The way that I was able, I'm actually quite shocked at how it worked out. It looked so natural, the way that they were kind of like tiered. And then I have a third one and I use it to the right hand side next to the sentiment where it is talking about a stool, like a toadstool. And I just thought that it all went together so well. It was something that was very unexpected. And for these wings, I did something a little bit different. I sort of did something like this with the lady on the swing who looked like she was flying, but her wings were flat. But for this one, since she was to the side, I thought it would be nice to kind of make some 3D wings. Now, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this once I actually start using this in my journal. I might glue it down or trim it, but for now, I thought that it was kind of a neat uh, process. This lady I thought was interesting. When I cut the butterfly wings apart, she looked really nice with just one wing to the right. But I want that other wing looked so nice against the masterboard that I wanted to use it. And so I thought I would put it up to the side. And then the sentiment says, you know, I'm divided or divided me, parted me. And I thought that's an interesting idea that she's somehow divided. And so that's what I left it as.
So I'm going to leave this sentiment white just as an experiment and then I'm going to take these journaling cards to my sewing machine. I had to use restraint. I didn't want to sew all over them even though the desire to do so was very strong but I've used restraint and I just did a little bit of sewing around some of the images and some of the sentiments and then I do dye her a little bit with a little bit of distress spray just to take the starkness out of her just for a little bit. Um, you can see I'm just kind of dropping a little bit of this distress spray on her. And I'm going to ink up her edges just so she doesn't look so unfinished. And so I feel like it gives a little bit of a different look to this journaling card. So that's going to pretty much wrap up this video. I hope that you do try this technique. It is a really fun one. These master boards are just really fun to create and it also helps you feel a little bit productive because you're kind of whittling down your scraps and stash just a card at a time. And you get 12 journaling cards out of one 12 by 12 piece of paper. So it, to me, it's like a win-win. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey and for supporting my channel and my Etsy store. I really do appreciate it. I hope you find some inspiration from these videos that you can incorporate into your own journaling sessions, journals, and papercraft activities. I will see you on Sunday for episode 34 of Junk Journal with me, and I will be working in my new summer journal. If you haven't seen a flip through of that, I'll link that down below as well. As always, thanks for watching.